Hi, this is Sintam Patel and welcome back to the video lecture series of the fundamental of machine design. In this lecture, we are going to look at the methodology, how to solve the uh, uh, knuckle joint examples and we are going to see how to design a knuckle joint. So basically, what is the knuckle joint? A knuckle joint is a joint which is used to connect the two different shaft which are transmitting the power from one end to another end. So basically this type of a joint is connect, used to uh, have a, a sustainability over the tensile force. So if you uh, connect the two shafts using the knuckle joint then the, both the shafts are going to uh, be able to sustain the tensile force. So uh, this type of a joint uh, is uh, designed and uh, widely used in a uh, automobile as well as the different uh, manufacturing sectors. So we are going to look at the design of this type of a joint first. Based on the design we are going to look at the dimensions which we require to calculate. So the design of the knuckle joint is uh, can be explained by this figure. As you can see there is a top view as well as the front view and the exploratory view is represented over here. So a top view and the front view represent each and every dimension which is required. Uh, the uh, diagram itself is ex explanatory but also we have a miniature model of the knuckle joint which is like this. As you can see uh, knuckle joint is made up of the number of components. The first component as you can see from the exploded view and this di uh, miniature model the first component is the double eye or we can say that it is a fork. Okay, So this is our fork. This is our fork. Uh, we can say it as a double eye. Why we know it as a double eye? Because it is having the two limbs, two limbs coming out of the, its body like this. Okay. So this is our double eye and inside, inside of the double eye, we insert it with the single eye. So this is our single eye. This one is a single eye. So as you can see, both are connected with a knuckle pin. So knuckle pin is inserted with, uh, with the, within the common slot. A common slot is uh, done by this hole and is done with by matching this hole with uh, this one. So if you match both the hole and insert the knuckle pin inside it, then you can lock the knuckle pin using the collar and the split pins. So collars and the split pins are over here. This is the split pin. This one is the collar. Uh, this uh, prevents the removal of the knuckle pin while the working condition of the shaft. So basically this work as one type of a lock. Okay, It locks the position of the knuckle pin inside the double eye and the single eye. Now we will we'll start looking at the procedure how to solve this type of an example as well as how to design a knuckle joint. So basically first step to design a knuckle joint is nothing but the failure of the tension. So failure of the rod in a tension which is known as a D. Now what is the rod? The rod is this one. So as you can see this is the design of the knuckle joint at the end the ends are of the rod. So these are the end of the rod. So he here we have made a shape of the knuckle joint of a double eye and a single eye but the basically these are the rods which are required to be connected using this joint. So basically these are the rods and uh, rods are required to be connected uh, using this joint and the first of all the rod is under the action of the tensile force. So if the rod fails then it may breaks or it may fail into the two different pieces like this the first one and this the second one. So if it is breaking like this if it is uh, failing like this then this rated or the hatch portion area is going to be our resisting area. Now this resisting area is required for the calculation of the tensile stress. We know the equation of tensile stress sigma t equals to force upon area. Now what is area? Area is the one which is resisting the failure. So as you can see this is a circular area. The circle of, of the diameter d, the d is the diameter of the shaft and if you put the value in this uh, equation then you will be able to calculate the sigma t. Now in your example they will be providing the value of the stress tensile stress they will be providing the value of the tensile force and you will be required to calculate the value of the diameter of the shaft so d value will be calculated using this equation after the calculation of the diameter of the shaft we will jump towards the, our uh, next uh, procedure that is the empirical relation 
Now, what are the empirical relations? These are one type of uh, examples or uh, assumptions, sorry. So, with, these are one type of uh, assumptions which were carried out you based on the practical readings. So, uh, if the scientist and the designer take a lot of readings practically and uh, they come to a conclusion uh, eventually and uh, those conclusions are the relation between the two dimensions. So, relation between the two dimensions uh, are one type of the assumption, empirical relations and we are going to calculate the rest of the dimension using these assumptions. So, the first dimension is the diameter of the knuckle pin. Now, what is knuckle pin? You can consider this diagram as a diagram of a knuckle pin. So, as you can see, the knuckle pin is the one which is connecting the two different uh, double eye as well as the single eye, uh, which is inserted in the common slot. The diameter of the knuckle pin is represented by dp and dp is equals to d. The diameter of the knuckle pin head, as you can see, the pin is having a head like this and this diameter is a bit larger than the diameter of the pin. So, diameter of the knuckle pin head is given as dh. So, dh is equals to 1.5 times d, which is a bit larger than the above diameter. The next is diameter of the single eye. Diameter of the single eye is represented over here. So, this is the diameter of the single eye, which is required to be calculated. We are not going to calculate the inner diameter because the inner diameter will be equal to the diameter of the pin. So, our intention is to calculate the outer diameter of the single eye and this outer diameter is represented by capital D. So, capital D is equals to 2D uh, as per the empirical relation. The next is the thickness of the single eye. Thickness of the single eye is what this vertical thickness. This vertical thickness is known as the thickness of the single eye. As you can see, this one is the single eye and this vertical thickness, this vertical thickness is known as a uh, thickness of the single eye. It is represented by T and uh, thickness of the uh, single eye is given by T equals to 1.25 times D. Now, thickness of the fork, the fork or a double eye, uh, it is given by the T1 equals to 0.75 times D. The thickness of the knuckle pin head, thickness of the knuckle pin head is given as a T2 equals to 0.5 times D. You don't have to find out how those equations have derived. You will have to just remember those equation in order to calculate the rest of the dimension of the knuckle joint. Now, as this design is carried out using the assumptions, then you will have to uh, check whether your design is safe in working condition or not. The parameters of the working condition will be provided in your example and uh, your given data will, will, be, will be providing you the parameters of the uh, different types of the working conditions. And you will have to check whether your joint is safe under the working condition or not. So, how are you going to check whether your joint is safe or not? Though, so, first step to check those dimensions is this one that the failure of the knuckle pin in shear. So, a knuckle pin in shear is over here. Uh, so, the failure of the knuckle pin would occur in this manner. So, let me explain you a bit. A knuckle pin is this one which is inserted inside the uh, common slot. So, if this single eye is subjected to a tensile force in this direction and the double eye is subjected to a tensile force in this direction. So, this both eye are going to pull the knuckle pin in the opposite direction. So, whenever the failure of the knuckle pin occurs, then it will fail in this manner. So, this is the diagram of the failure of the knuckle pin. So, uh, the failure would occur in this uh, area as well as in this area. So, as you can see, this is the failure which is occurring at the two different cross section and that is why this type of a failure is known as a double shear. Now, whenever a double shear is occurring, you will multiply your equation with 2. Now, the area which is resisting this type of a failure is known uh, is circular area and uh, we know this, this is the circle of the knuckle pin and that is why the area can be written as a pi by 4 dp square. We are going to use the diameter of the knuckle pin over here. So, you be careful while putting the diameter because in your examples, uh, you will be uh, very, uh, you will be given the number of diameters and you will have to be very careful while selecting the fun which is right in that particular equation. So, pi by 4 dp square, uh, that is the area. 
tau equals to p upon pi by 4 dp square into 2. Now in this equation we know the value of p, we know the value of dp, we have calculated it using the Kimperger relation and now we are going to calculate the value of the tau. So if you can get the value of the tau then you can directly compare it with the allowable value of the shear stress which will be provided in your given data in your example. If you compare it, if you find that your calculated value is less than the given value then your design is safe. And if the design is safe, then you can move forward towards checking the other parameters. And if it is unsafe, then you will have to increase the diameter, then you will have to increase the dimension and then check the design again. If it is safe, then you can go forward, uh, if it is not, then you will have to increase the dimension again. So this is how we are going to uh, check whether our design is safe or not. Now we are going to check whether our single eyes is safe or not. So in order to check our single eye, uh, the first checking is in the tension. So if the single eye is failing under the condition of the tensile force, then the failure of the single eye would look like this. And the failure will occur over here. So this area is required to be calculated. First of all, you need this horizontal distance, this one and this one. How to calculate this horizontal distance? We know the value of the diameter. This is D and inner diameter is DP. So if you simply subtract dp from the d, then you will get this horizontal distance. This horizontal distance is nothing but the dp, d minus dp, capital D minus small dp. Now if you multiply this vertical distance, then you will get the resisting area. This vertical distance is nothing but the t. So this vertical distance is multiplied with the subtraction and your answer comes out to be d minus dp into p. So that is your area. Now we are going to move forward uh, in a moment like this. In this uh, equation as you can see D, DP and T each and every parameter is known using the empirical relation. We know the value of P then you will be able to calculate the answer of sigma T. Once you calculate the sigma t, compare it with the given value and if it is less than the given value then your design is safe and you are ready to move forward. Okay. Similarly, we are going to check for the shear stress. So uh, we, we are going to write the equation of the shear stress based on the failure. So uh, under the shearing condition your single eye is going to fail like this. So it is failing on this surface and this surface. So it is failing on both the surfaces and the area of both the surfaces are required to be calculated. So first of all you need this distance. This distance is nothing but the d minus dp by 2. But the area is two, uh, twice and that is why d minus d will be your answer. We know this vertical distance it is nothing but the t. So d minus dp into t will be your area. p upon this area will give you the answer of the shear stress. If you calculate the shear stress and compare it with the given value and if it is less than the given value then your design is safe. Now looking forward for the crushing stress, crushing stress is uh, one type of a contact stress. Uh, the contact of the knuckle pin with the single eye is required to be evaluated. First of all the contact area from the front view or projected area of the contact uh, region is like this, like this. Uh, uh, rectangular area. Now in order to calculate this rectangle we know this horizontal distance is nothing but the dp and this vertical is distance is nothing but the t. So our rectangular area is nothing but the dp my into t and our crushing stress will be less than the v1 value of the crushing stress and that is why our design is safe. Now these were the equations of the single eye. Now we are going to uh, uh, derive the equation of the double eye using the single eye. The only difference between the double eye and the single eye is that the single eye is having only one limb and double eye is having the two limbs. So we are going to substitute the value of the thickness of the double eye instead of the single eye thickness as a T1. In case of the single eye that thickness of the single eye was T. Now in case of this double eye we are going to use T1 instead of the T. Now double eye is having the two limbs that is why each and every area will be multiplied with the two. That is the only change in the equations. So if you remember the equation of the single eye, you can write the equation of the double eye from the equation of the single eye. So uh, you will have to just substitute the value of the thickness 
of the uh, double eye. So the double eye thickness is represented by T1 and uh, the rest of the answer, the rest of the area is multiplied with the 2. So similar actions were taken and uh, the rest of the equations were derived from this equation. So if you can compare the given values and if you can uh, derive those equation and if you can remember those equation then you will be able to check whether your design is safe or not and uh, how to uh, solve this type of example will be explained in the upcoming lecture so we conclude our lecture over here thank you mm -hmm.